All right, I'm going to take you through um, a little bit of my workflow and how I work in GIMP, which is my graphics manager. And what I'll do is I'll just drag this in and you'll see I work. I don't work in Windows, I work on a Linux computer, so that's probably why it might not look so familiar to you. And my background view there is a photograph I took of uh, Lynn Quetlin, which is uh, not far from Bangor in North Wales. Very beautiful place. Uh, I, re I, I really managed to capture the mirror effect of the trees in the in the on the surface of the water there. Lovely picture that is. It's been my uh, desktop for years now. Okay, back to the subject. So what I've done is I've created a couple of basically they're, they're masks. So it's my thumbnail mask. So if I launch that now that opens up my GIMP, my my graphics design tool. And what I can do now is um is open is find myself a background picture that goes well with it. So I think I was looking at this one. So I can open that with GIMP as well. And I've now got the overlay. So what we've got here is all the checkered view you can see there is what we call alpha and alpha means it just means transparent it's uh, it's effectively transparent now if you look up here where my cursor is you'll see that 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 layer this transparency is actually just one layer and there is another invisible transparent layer up on top of that which I've created OK, so if I if I was to delete that now, I can then go layer, add a new layer and then just bring it in like that. So I've got that new layer on top. OK, now I'll need that for a specific reason. So if we look at the size of this, it's 1280, tw sorry, 1920 by 1080. So I'm using a 1080p format for my videos. So I need that 1080 uh, in the height it's this height from here to here and I need that now the still I took with my camera if you look at the very top line you'll see it's very big indeed yeah but it's it's the correct ratio it's still the same 16 9 ratio as my video but I've got this rather nice picture of some um, shake and bake chicken with some side salad and some cucumber. And I want to set that as my uh, title, as my um, thumbnail title, thumbnail. So what I'm going to do is I can now go into that. If I right click on the image, I can then go down to image and then scale the image down to the size I want it. So I scale it down in that box to... 1920 and because I've linked these two boxes together with this chain that means that the aspect ratio between that will not change so if I once I enter that figure it automatically resizes that dynamic and then changes that in accordance with the 169 ratio uh, I've got, it's 350 by 350 uh, pixels. I think that's perfectly okay for what I'm doing. I don't want the file to be too huge. And then all I can do is simply hit scale. Now, that is in scale to its original size. But if you look down at the bottom of the screen now where my cursor is, you'll see I can now bring that up to 50%. If I bring it up to 100, it'll be just a bit too big so if I bring it up to 50% it's a manageable size so now I've got that I can go up here edit copy or copy visible copy and then I can simply just paste it on top of this layer here now oh it's made the image underneath disappear has it well yeah it has but it's floating on top of that layer which is floating on top of the original picture so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that and anchor it 
to the layer above. Still looks like it's all on top. Yeah. And then all I have to do is change the priority of the viewing of this. That's either by moving this one up or this one down. I'll do that. Move it down with that arrow. And there you see suddenly it turns up on there. So that's why you get I get the that's how I get the consistency of my thumbnail pictures. <clears throat> Once I've got to that um state what I can do now is I can think about putting the writing on it so here I am I can go over there that's the text tool if you follow my cursor over to the left and then what I do is I go into here and to make sure the text is looking good you've got these guides on these which kind of help you space things out so I'll lock that into that corner just by clicking and dragging and dropping, lock it into that corner. And then I can put um, put my title in here. So I'll do that now. And I'll take that down. Chicken. So that's a shake and bake chicken. By the time you see this, you might have already seen that video. Now, what, what I've done here is, is I've selected all that now. Because of what I want to do is I want to resize it to fill the screen up a bit more. So, just like that. I think that's big enough. Let's make it 230. And then we'll come off it and you can now see that. Now, what I want to do is... I where where that is over the white here and here it starts to disappear so the way I get around that is to give this some relief give the, the the words some relief and the way I do that is I go over to my the the the, the active layer which is the the writing and then I right click on that and then I I alpha that to selection and then you see the lines of crawling ants around the entirety of the lettering. All right, that means that's selected. So now I can go up to here, follow my cursor up. I go up to filters, light and shadow. And I can either do something like drop shadow, which is what I'm going to do here. Or I can use the Zach effect, which basically is the same thing. But I'll go to drop shadow and then... It gives me offsets. So I've got offset of four pixels to on the Y axis and an offset of four pixels on the X axis. All right. And you can set the color of the shadow and all sorts of things and the opacity of it. I tend to leave those figures as they are because I'm kind of happy with those. So if I go along and click OK, you see what's happened now. It's given some definition to that letter in okay now what I've got here is I've got all these layers now what I want to do is I want to export this as a J JPEG file and JPEG files can only handle one layer so unless I want a huge huge file uh, I need to flatten that image in order for it to compress enough to become a JPEG file and be small enough to upload to YouTube so what I'll do here is I simply hit um, I hit Control and M, and that gives me the merge options. So it will merge all these layers together. In other words, this, if you think of this as the bottom uh, layer, and then it's got a transparency on top of that with the lettering on it, and then it's got a transparency on top of that with the drop shadow from the lettering on it, and it's got the base image uh, right at the top. So what I want to do, uh, just to make this nice and clear, I'm going to move that up one layer. You can barely see anything. But that then puts the letter in above the shadow and below the frame. Yeah. So what I do then is I'll hit Merge. 
and that flattens it down to a single layer you see up here on the right so that's my layers box and it flattens it down to a single layer now I've still got the crawling ants around that so what I do is I do control shift and A and that takes that away so that's the image as we're going to see it on my video and in the thumbnail in the listing on YouTube so that's really basically it it's really that simple so I've taken basically just let's go back to shake break chicken I've taken that thumb thumb mask and that image and then turned it into a nice thumbnail image that I can use on YouTube okay just a couple of pointers now um, the lettering as you do it you can change the lettering to any color you like I've got lots of different colors I use which I regularly use in that palette there and you can pick any color on the slide and change it to the active color anything you like and then just okay or you can pick up a dropper and take a sample from anywhere in your picture that's a nice red and put that in there or you could take the picture of the, the color of the cucumber and add that to it things like that um, so you or you can put in if you have a HTML number for it uh, which you can get off uh, quite a lot of uh, Pantones. If you if you get Pantone colours, then you pick a particular colour that you like. You can uh, put in the HTML notation in there, and there are several online facilities that will convert Pantone numbers to HTML notations. And uh, you just have to just search for them, and they'll you'll you'll find them. So you you pick a colour you like. So when you actually do your, if you want to do some writing for instance you can flip those around and then I can write in black on there if I want so there you see it's or you can go along here select letters and you can do things like change the color of just those two letters so you end up with images like that I don't want that on my finished thing so we'll bin that but that just gives you some idea of how how that works and the colors now we've got our image as we want it so what I want to do now is I just want to go up to file and you've got save but that saves it as in the format that Jim in Jim's native format if you want to uh, save it in JPEG you have to export it so I hit export it or control and E and then I pick where it's going to be it's going back in my shake and bake chicken folder and then I'm I want to change it to JPEG because that's PNG file which is too big and if I go if I call it thumb dot JPG so I've turned it into a JPEG file just by exporting it and that will bring up the JPEG export dialog box and then I just hit export so what I have now in my shake and bake chicken folder is my new image. Nice, eh? Very simple. All right. Uh, let me know in the comments below if you like these type of videos and if you find them helpful. And if you do, I'll, I'll see if I can do a few more for you in the future. So thanks for watching and see you in the next video. If you have enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you would like to follow my channel, please subscribe and be sure to click the bell icon to receive notification of all my upcoming videos. Thanks for watching.